There's frustration and unhappiness spreading across several federal agencies, but one struggling the most when it comes to morale, and a recent investigation found out exactly why. This is within the Transportation Security Administration, TSA. If you've ever taken a flight in this country, you already know the deal. They're checking your IDs, telling you to take your computer out of the case, take your shoes off before you walk in the scanner. The TSA is a sub-agency of the Department of Homeland Security in the rankings Homeland Security ranks on the lower end of larger agencies. You have to understand when you're looking at the Department of Homeland Security, there are over a dozen sub-agencies that fall underneath it. And one of the lowest ranking sub-agencies is the TSA with a score of 45 out of 100 points, which is pretty awful. The TSA currently employs about 50,000 security officers across the country in airports. The core issue here is the morale is dropping the sense of purpose is gone. Why is this? Well, there are five main reasons, which include recognizing performance, career development, work-life balance, not feeling heard, and communication. The TSA has known about this for a few years, and they have made attempts to address these issues. One of these issues is recognizing performance. Supervisors were not always doing this. So the way that this works is, you know, in a regular situation, you put in eight, 10, 12 hours at work Maybe you did some good things. Maybe you did some bad things, but it's not being recognized at all. So if there's not an incentive, whether it's a positive or a negative one, when you do an action, when you perform and there's no feedback, there's no incentive, you start to develop apathy. You could care less. It doesn't matter if I do a good job, if I do a bad job, nobody is noticing and nobody cares. So the TSA decided we're gonna implement a course to address this, a one hour course for supervisors so they can learn how to give performance feedback to their employees. But the problem with one hour courses is, let me ask you right now, how do you feel about courses? Most federal employees, they have annual training. There's probably a half a dozen, a dozen, sometimes even more different courses that you have to take. Are you really paying attention? Do you really want to take those courses? The answer, nine times out of 10, is no. You're just doing it to keep your supervisor off of your back. That's the same thing that could be going on right here. This could be a check the box and it's not really driving any type of meaningful change. With some of the other issues, the TSA decided to go ahead and push out a survey so they could get feedback from the employees, from the leaders, from their perspective. What should they do to fix it? Which sounds great, but there was no follow-up. GAO found there was not follow-up done with the survey. So that had me wondering, how is the hierarchy in the TSA? So this is how it goes. The TSOs, which stands for Transportation Security Officer, that's pretty much at the bottom. They report to the lead TSO, who reports to the supervisory TSO and managers. They report to the federal security director. So GAO is looking at the top of the pyramid. They're looking at the director. When they're talking about senior leadership, this is what they're focusing on. And the TSA, they develop local action plans. This is like a focus group. Everyone sits around and they start brainstorming, discussing ideas. This is an example of what one of these action plans looked like in the airport last year. You can see from this picture, the root causes here are no favorites and communication. I don't think you're ever going to get rid of favoritism completely. I think this is just ingrained in human nature to a certain extent. But the best way that you can do it is not by doing a course. The best way to get rid of favoritism is to increase the transparency. When it comes to people getting promoted, when it comes to people getting awards, if that process is more transparent so everyone can see what goes on behind the curtain, what was the merit, what was this individual's qualifications to attain that award or certificate, that could go a long way in helping. Then we have communication. Communication is the root cause of all discontentment, right? Because it's, it's about expectation management. What do you expect from your organization? What do you expect from your supervisor? What are the expectations on you to do a good job, to get the performance bonus, to get the promotion? And it's astounding how many supervisors throughout the government, they do not have good communication skills or they refuse to exercise them. It's a two-way thing. And I recommend anybody getting a federal government job to make an effort to keep that open channel of communication with you and your supervisor. It is important because otherwise you could end up forming some resentment. When people do not meet your expectations, you feel bitter, that develops into resentment, and next thing you know, you're in a toxic workplace and you're trying to get out. As it relates to TSA, a lot of TSOs were told they could give feedback 
but they're probably not going to see any meaningful change from that feedback. And this sounds to me like a middle manager that's kind of disgruntled. And this is a huge problem because I believe leadership at the top of the pyramid, they would want to hear about how they can improve their organization. When I was a leader in many different organizations, I often encourage people to criticize me. This is my plan. This is my thought process. Now criticize me. How can I make it better? Why is this not the best? Because if you have a plan as a leader, you should welcome it to be challenged. It should be able to withstand scrutiny and criticism. Otherwise, is it really the best plan? Now, when a leader makes a decision and decides to go forth with a plan, it needs to be supported by the organization. And there's a clear distinction when you're developing a decision and you're trying to find the best path and when you want to execute that plan. Okay, now let's take a look at work-life balance because this is one of the main benefits that drive people into the federal government. So what's going on here? We have TSOs explaining that their schedules are shifting crazy. And the reason why their work schedules are shifting is because the planes are not reliable. They don't always take off on time. Sometimes there's a malfunction with a plane. Sometimes a flight gets delayed. So that impacts their work schedule. So much so that one of the main grievances is it's difficult to secure childcare while this individual is at work because of the way it fluctuates from minutes to hours, depending on what's going on with the plane. Two other big work-life balance issues, it's hard to take summer leave. You wanna do a vacation with the family in the summer? Well, everybody wants to do that. And you're a TSO, you work at the TSA, you're gonna be at work more often than not. Another thing is the excessive overtime because of the understaffing. So what's happening with the staffing? Where are the jobs at? Are they open? Are they trying to recruit? Let's jump on usajobs.gov and figure that out. All right, from here, we're gonna type in TSA and we can see there are currently over 377 jobs and 270, they're open to the public. Almost all these jobs are in the accepted service, but the TSA has an interagency agreement. That means you can work in the TSA and you can still apply for the competitive service in a lot of agencies. TSA salaries, how much you get paid, they're not on the GS pay ban. A lot of people have been complaining about that. They recently received a 31% pay bump last summer, so that should help out. This is what a typical TSO job announcement looks like. This one's in New Jersey. Pay range here is between 46 and 64,000 a year. Then you have other jobs in the TSA, like a program assistant. This actually gets a higher salary than the TSO with the range between 74 and $97,000 a year. The salary difference in this situation is likely because the assistant position is in California, which is a high cost area. At the end of the day, GAO issued nine recommendations essentially telling TSA to identify the root causes of dissatisfaction, to do more to ensure the leaders are implementing the results of their local action plan. Make sure that's happening throughout the country in all the airports. Now, we talked a lot about the TSA, and they have a low ranking, but they don't have the lowest ranking. There's another agency out there that's even lower. And if you want to know more about that, then I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.